what I'm gonna do is use my little uh, six inch rule with a 64th um, of an inch adjustment on there. And I'm going to go down and measure how all these strings are doing at the 12th fret. Now, as far as height, again, this is gonna be, you know, very individual for your individual playing style, but a as a, a middle of the road thing, kind of a standard uh, operating base height is usually uh, like 7 64ths on the low um, E or B string and, um, and then 5 64ths on your G string. Now again, it's, it's so personal, the height of, uh, the heights of this. And, and uh, you know, with, for yourself, you're gonna know by its playability. And if, uh, you know, you do some, ha like I do and do work for other people, everybody is gonna be different. As a matter of fact, there was a, I've had, I've had guys that were just, you know, total um, kind of very technical players who really actually the, the action they used was nearly half that on both strings. And then I've had players like there's a really a wonderful uh, musician session player in town named Tim Marks and his action is excruciatingly high. He just loves the bounce and the sound of the string under tension. And his uh, action was actually like um, three or four sixty-fourths higher than what I just mentioned, which is uh, kind of unplayable for me personally, but there's no doubt all the records he's played on and all the artists he's played with that that works for him. So anyway, we're gonna check this and see where we're sitting. And I can tell right here, that uh, the G string is, is dead on to our, our uh, medium height, our, our 564. And what I do is we go across the fingerboard is you wanna graduate it from that initial reading of five to seven. So you're just gonna, it's gonna go up a little bit gradually all the way across because each successive lower string needs just a little more clearance to speak clearly and to allow the string to vibrate without rattling against the frets. Now, as I look at these, I can see that they're probably just a sliver high for this client. And so I'm gonna lower them. Of course, when I play the instrument, it'll really let me know what I need to know. But I'm gonna go ahead and adjust these down. And again, just like we did with the truss rod tool, the, you need to use the proper tool for, for these uh, nuts here. I, I happen to know that I have the right tool that's the right size, but um, two, as, um, you know, as you sweat on these and you perform with your instruments, uh, keeping them clean is important because you know these uh, screws just have a little bit of black enamel on them. And they're gonna they rust pretty quick when they have moisture on them. So you're gonna have to keep track of that so they don't lock up in these slots. Uh, when I have problems with screws that do lock up in there, I, there's a, there's a penetrating oil you can get, you know, from Lowe's or whatever, and just put a little, you could actually use the tool, put little drips in there, and it will get down in into the threads of the screw should, should they lock up. But the important thing is to, uh, you know, keep it clean and use the proper tool for your adjustments. Now I wanna talk a little bit about setup specific to the low B string. Now, each bass, the low, B strings, even with the same gauge string, the same scale length and everything, um, they have a different tension on different instruments. And you're gonna need to pay particular attention to that so that you have a good um, centered pitch and so it doesn't rattle. Now some instruments I've played, you know, it seems like to tend itself more towards instruments that have uh, angled headstocks and stuff. I, I believe that uh, the break angles at the bridge and the nut have a lot to do with the tension of the strings. And so the low, whether or not the low B is floppy or whether it's taut, but this is gonna affect your you know, personal setup because if your low B string doesn't have a lot of tension, for it to be able to speak with a good centered pitch and not rattle, you're probably gonna have to raise it maybe a little more than the arc we talked about with the other strings, the gradual arc. Now again, Conversely, if, if the low B string is, is a nice, uh, tight, um, you know, high tension, so a, a lot of those will, will speak very well at a uh, low action. So this is something that we won't be able to, uh, you know, ascertain until we're actually playing the bass, you know, when we kind of check on how we're doing with our setup. And uh, we can make those, uh, you know, fine tuned adjustments at the end. 
What we're going to do now is adjust the intonation of the instrument, that is the actually the string length, so that the instrument will play in tune with itself. Uh, remember that you want uh, all the strings to be in tune before you start because those affect the relief or the curvature of your neck, which will in turn uh, affect the action and then in turn affect your intonation. So if we were to have um, too much relief because the strings weren't at pitch or they're pulled too tight, then I intonate it. It actually, when we get strings to, at pitch, it wouldn't be exactly where we wanted it. So that's important, you know, at, at each station here of each attribute that we adjust, we want uh, the instrument to be back at pitch because some of the adjustments we do do change the pitch. So I've done that. And now we're gonna check the intonation of our G string. Um, what we want to do is I want to, I like to use, well, I use the open string as the, uh, the basis for doing it. And some people use harmonics and uh, I don't use them. When the strings are new, the harmonics are, they're, they're in tune, they're pretty close. But as a string dies, like actually this client wanted to keep these strings on the instrument. I did not put new strings on the instrument. And uh, as the string dies a little bit, the harmonics start to go flat and they're just not a good indicator to use as the basis for tuning at that point. New strings, you can use them. I just, as a general rule, don't use them. So it doesn't matter if I'm using old strings, new strings, or anything. So I use the open string as uh, our, my basis for pitch. And then we wanna check at the octave. And that, that's in tune right there. But the, also we want to check uh, at the fifths, both at the uh, seventh fret and the 19th fret, because it has been my experience that, um, you know, according to tempered tuning and fret math and stuff that sometimes that uh, the octave can be dead on in tune with itself with the open string. And then the fifth sometimes can be, uh, especially uh, at the 19th fret, can be a little sharp. Now, if you play your instrument up there, you want it to play in tune everywhere as much as possible. So sometimes I'll just fudge it just a little bit. I don't want to get too far away from the pitch at the octave because chances are we're playing bass. We're going to be more often than not playing lower. And I want this to be closer than this, but we don't want this to be totally out of tune either. As it turns out that uh, I'm, I'm aware of this instrument's manufacturer and I know that the that the, there really are no problems along that line. When I get the octave uh, in tune at the 12th fret, I know that the low end bass that I'm playing is gonna be in tune at the 19th and the seventh fret. So it's not really an issue with this instrument, but it has been my experience that it's been an issue with uh, other manufacturers. Our next string that we're gonna intonate here is the D string. And I notice here the D string is, is tending just a little sharp at the octave. And so I've got some motion there I can see in the strobe tuner. So when it's a little sharp, it means the distance from the 12th fret to the saddle is actually a, a little too short. And so what I'm gonna do is I need to lengthen that string just a little bit so the pitch will lower. And what I'll do to do that is on this particular bridge, the adjustment to do that is I'll un is I will tighten this screw to make the saddle go that way and make the and make the string a little longer right there because it was sharp as we were reading it. And I'll retune the string. And that looks like pretty much we've got no movement on there. Check that. Maybe, you know what, maybe just a hair. You know, the actually when you when you check the, the, the 19th fret, you can see some of the tendencies of the intonation a little stronger. Because usually if it's sh like sharp here, it'll be really sharp here. So if you're kind of going, ah, you know, that kind of thing, a lot of times if you play you know, your other note, you can really see the, um, what's going on. Another thing I wanted to talk about is um, 
when you're adjusting the saddles, uh, specifically when you're unscrewing them, to be aware to really reseat that screw against the facing that it's pressing against. Uh, often it, it can be the tendency, you know, you've got a string holding some downward pressure on the saddle here. And when you unscrew the screw, oftentimes the screw will unscrew itself and just go that way and you won't get any saddle movement. It'll, you'll, you're just unscrewing the screw. So what you wanna do uh, when you loosen them is, is just do a little press against there to push the screw through the hole and then push the saddle into the position that you wanted it in. Because otherwise you have no saddle movement and you, and you won't get any saddle movement till you're playing that real pretty passage that's really quiet you know, in your show and then suddenly your saddle goes tink and your string goes out of tune. And that's not what we want to happen. So as you're adjusting this, you want to really be sure that uh, all your screws are really pushed against the facing they're meant to press against for, for adjusting that saddle. So let's double check after what I did there. Oh yeah, that's exactly what we want to happen. And our D string is in tune with itself. So now we're gonna, um, I've gone ahead and uh, intonated everything except for we're gonna talk about the specific problems of the B string. Not problems per se, but just, um, you know, uh, things that are specific to that string. One of them being is, uh, you know, it's actually, got not as much tension as some of the other strings. It's a great big string tuned really low, and it's very easy to, as you're uh, playing it, to adjust the pitch. Even I've noticed that if you don't have a, a real high gear ratio tuner, it's kind of tough to, to really get the, the B string tuned and nailed because a tiny bit of adjustment goes a long way. And so th the, the same thing is true as you're playing it. Now, we want to play, you know, at a performance strength, you know, the same kind of tension, the same kind of action you would do as performance, but you might want to be aware, even as you perform, what you do to that string, because, you know, our objective is to get nice centered pitch everywhere and for it to speak well. And uh, being that it's a, such a low note, you know, those are specific problems. So as we're intonating it, we w just want to be aware that if you press hard or you even gently just bend the string just a little bit, you're not gonna get a real uh, you know, exact uh, pitch of where, where the string is really setting. So what I'm gonna do, I've got it at pitch and now I'm checking uh, at the octave and up here. And I notice that this guy is, is just a hair sharp there. Recognize too that if you don't have a modern tuner, more often than not you're going to have a real hard time um, tuning and intonating your low B string because uh, you know a lot of tuners just don't just don't like trying to find the pitch of that and you're going to have trouble reading it. And so for that specific reason, um, you know, I all for intonating, of course, I use a nice stroke tuner, but even, uh, you know, I use modern tuners live for that specific purpose because I uh, probably do half half of my performing on a five string bass. And, um, and I want all those pitches to be nice and round and centered and in tune. And, and if I can't read it on the tuner, there's no way for me to, to make that happen. The other thing I want to talk about is um, when you're tuning and intonating your B string, understand this is a great big old thick string at a low pitch. And what will happen when you put strings on new is that it kind of rounds itself, itself up and over the saddle, meaning it really hasn't settled down to a final resting place point to point here. It just, um, what I do is just go ahead and bend it a little bit, not too hard. You don't want to, um, you know, create fatigue by, uh, you know, really bending it. You know how that happens when you bend metal and then it breaks. But yeah, I want to bend it into, into the shape it's going to end up in when that string is really settled in. Otherwise, I'm not going to get a real exacting pitch reading, it, um, you know, of the string being in tune with itself at the octave. And, then, and, the night, and all the places that you want to play, it's just not going to be 
really on there. So just understanding what happens to this great big string, you know, making sure that it's really uh, settled in over the saddle and your nut so you're getting true readings. Also, it's been my experience that your center of pitch will be much better because the, the string being settled, it doesn't have an opportunity for overtones or extra harmonics. You get mu much more fundamental when the string is in its final resting place like that. A little addendum to what we've been talking about, about intonating and pitch and tuning, is that w when you're tuning your instrument, if you come up to the pitch, your final resting pitch from underneath it, it ends up being a more stable pitched instrument. Because if you, if you can see when you're, when you're detuning it, there's an opportunity at every friction point for the string to hang somewhere. And, uh, and after you're playing a little while, that, then it has an opportunity to release maybe that tension somewhere. But if you come from underneath the pitch, basically it's at, you know, it's at tension everywhere and it's gonna be a little more stable uh, when, when you do it that way. And so I always, as I'm intonating and retuning the string, and when I'm tuning in general, I come from beneath the pitch and st string it up so that we want the string when it's in tune for it not to move anymore. And everything along these lines that create movement, it, you know, is, is not what we want because it'll, we take the chance of it going out of tune. Another attribute along those lines is as a, when you wind your strings around the posts, you'll want those strings to be, all the windings to be right against each other. Because if you under, you know, if you can see if they're floating a little bit, then uh, what we'll have is, you know, th those windings have an opportunity to continue to move towards each other, or and, and there's more opportunities for you to go out of tune. And so when I uh, string instruments, I will make sure the windings are tight against each other. The string is stretched. The string is, uh, you know, in its final shape over the saddles, and I come up from beneath the pitch to its final resting pitch. And I think if you pay attention to all these little details, you have a much better opportunity for the instrument to be in tune and stay in tune. You know, what we do when we set up an instrument, uh, I mean, the objective is for it to play nice and play in tune with itself and all that. And we need to actually, you know, play it for it to do that. So first what I'm gonna do though, I understand that when I adjust the intonation and that, uh, that sometimes that'll adjust string height a little bit. Because if you imagine the string, if you were to, um, you know, shorten a string by sending the saddle in towards the, the neck there, actually it'll lower the string just ever so slightly. So we want to, I want to, first thing I'll do is I'll kind of double check where uh, everything's sitting. Now those are, those seem to be where I left them there. And then what we want to do is just, you know, check the instrument and see how it speaks everywhere. And uh, if our uh, relief is right, and it seems to be where I left it, um, it should, we want it to have an even tone throughout the entire register of the instrument. We don't, we want it to be, even though we're playing high notes, we want it to be still nice and fat up here and have good, you know, clearance over the top frets on our G string, as well as being able to have a real nice uh, centered pitch on our low B string, most especially the pitches we use most below the E. That's the kind of the main reason for having that string there is to get a couple more low notes and also to give some notes, you know, give us access quickly to some of the notes we might have to skip down here for. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just, uh, you know, I'll just kind of do a little, basically a little exercise. Now I've noticed here that this B string, just in the middle here, now there isn't a whole lot of relief in this, and this B string, that just the particular tension of it, I got just a little bit of flop here in the center of the neck. So what I'm gonna probably wanna do, and as I notice, see the adjustment here, it's, it's maybe real close to the height that the E string is off the neck. So I'm gonna raise that B string a little bit.
I think that gave us the clearance we wanted because um, now it, you know, again, the lower string, the lower pitch, it's gonna, when you actually strike the note, it's gonna have a larger ellipse when the string vibrates. And so we need a little extra space for clearance to let that, uh, you know, vibrate completely and start to come back down into its uh, different harmonic notes. The strings, when they vibrate, you know, you know, first it starts in one big ellipse, and then it splits into two smaller ellipses as, it, as, it, as the note decays. And so understanding how that string works make me understand why I need to do the things that I do. Now when you intonate it too, you know, often I'll uh, just to double check that, you know, with a I'll use some uh, combinations, make some chords with open notes and some notes up high. And, and I, can, I can hear that when I tuned it, that it's, that we're, that we're doing real good on intonation. Now, I, this feels really good now, and I think I, uh, understanding my client, the way he plays, he's a, he's a gospel guy. He's going he's gonna to play with um, some facility. You know, if you've heard modern gospel music, you know there's a lot of motion in it, a lot of harmonic motion, a lot of bass motion. And uh, his neck is a little straighter than some guys, and his action is um, average to low. I've just edged it a teeny bit below uh, what we talked about initially in this video. So now I know that that all is, you know, going to be really close for him. We can probably fine tune that with him when he picks this instrument up. Now understanding though, I uh, adjusted the height of this B string. Now since I adjusted that, uh, what we will have to do is uh, readjust the intonation because I've changed the the distance it, ta it takes to, to press the string down. And chances are now it'll play just a hair sharp than, than we want it to. So I'll need to adjust that. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I did check the intonation and uh, it was just fine. I, I, it was only a minor adjustment really to get the string where it needed to go. If you made more of an adjustment, then you probably more than likely would have to change the intonation. So we've gone through all the different uh, things that you need to adjust to set up your instrument. Some of the things you need to think about while you're doing it and understanding the order that we need to do it. Remember to get your neck in the right shape first, check the nut, then uh, set the saddle height, and then do our intonation. With the understanding that adjusting any one of these, you know, could adjust other things. So at the end, you know, we, we double check to make sure our intonation is right. The string height is where we intended it for, for it to be. You know, like I said, when we adjusted that intonation, uh, you know, sometimes it can change the string height as well as changing the string height, adjust the intonation. So it's like this, uh, it's, you know, like this circular thing. So uh, making sure that at, at the final resting place, strings at pitch, you know, everything is where we'd like it to be. So I think, I think my client's gonna be happy with in, this instrument and I hope you're happy with yours. So. Thank you.